This may look just like another social get-together. In fact, Europe's leading law students gathered at the Polish Embassy in Strasbourg in preparation for the first European Human Rights Moot Court competition in English. Poland is one of several Council of Europe member states to support the event. Poland has two finalists in the 18 teams that are taking part in the competition this week. I think if the competition had been conducted in French, we would have had difficulty putting forward some good teams. Sixteen university teams from 13 European states are preparing to battle their way to the grand final. Members of the winning teams will get a one-month traineeship at the European Court of Human Rights and there are cash prizes totalling €5,000. The uh, effort of bringing the court to the full knowledge of our population, of our citizenry, but particularly of the next generation, is something that fits extremely well with our concept of uh, our membership of the Council of Europe, what is important about it, what we prioritize in our uh, membership, and the court uh, is at the center of the system of um, preserving and enhancing uh, human rights in Europe. It's straight into the competition. Teams have three days of pleadings ahead of them. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Hiltunen, and me and my colleagues here, Ricardo Sabona, Jasmina Jokinen, and Sara Miettinen, will be making submission on behalf of the applicant of this case. Contrary to the submission made by the applicant, respondent submits that case lodged by the applicant should be declared inadmissible. Search right, a search application. Here, Georgia's Tbilisi State University pits its wits against Finland's University of Helsinki. All teams have been given a fictitious case to moot concerning the sterilization of HIV positive women in the make believe country of Orosia. Thank you. Now I close now the hearing. <laughs> when you stand in university, you sit usually all day in library and you don't do really what a lawyer is supposed to do. So, what they get out of this moot court is they know what it means to be a lawyer, how to plead, how what to say, how to stand, how to look and how to prepare. On the third and final day, all but two teams were eliminated. The UK's University of Essex and Ireland's Trinity College in Dublin went into the final right there in the main chamber of the European Court of Human Rights. Let's see how they got on. The court. I'm opening the hearing uh, on the sterilization of pregnant HIV women in Orosia, uh, brought to the court by AA against the government of Orosia. My name is Harley Fan, and with my co-agent Anna-Katrin Speck, Nadine Daroshi, and Dorian Hardy, it is a privilege to attend the present hearing today on behalf of Orosia. Today, I will be addressing the preliminary issue of standing, the core issue of full and informed consent uh, that uh, feeds into the con violations of uh, the Convention articles, articles which we will be submitting today. And finally, I will address uh, the breach of Article 3. My first part of the question I would like if you could answer, please. What is the factual basis? What is the medical insight you base this idea on? There's a risk of life here. A doctor finds himself in front of a situation where there is the risk of life, and you say that uh, there must be consent before he can do anything. Yes. What do, what do you base that on? Uh, first, we claim that sterilization procured without full and informed consent constituted a violation to the applicant's right to physical and moral integrity. Second, we will claim that this sterilization has violated the applicant's right to establish, develop and maintain relationships within her community. Third, we will claim that the state has failed in its positive obligations under Article 8 to protect AA from interference. And finally, we will submit a preemptive claim that any interference um, as regards Article 8 may not be justified by virtue of the Article 8.2 derogation clause. 
We consider the entire application as manifestly unfounded under Article 35, Paragraph 3A of the Convention. With her complaint, the applicant only seeks to appeal the rulings made by the erosion courts. We submit that the only issue capable of engaging Article 8 is the sterilization, and we will restrict ourselves to this issue given that Erosia cannot be held responsible for acts of private individuals. Our claims relate to the lack of safeguards, to the lack of protective measures put in place at national level by the erosion authorities to protect vulnerable individuals such as AA and um, safeguards that would have been necessary given the uh, intrusive nature of such a campaign. We will reconvene at five o'clock when you will be able to hear the court's judgment. And the winner is Team 84 from Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. I must say I was impressed by the quality of the teams, by their pleading, their pleadings, their arguments, the, the way they were presenting their cases, and especially taking into account the fact that it was the first ELSA human rights competition. It's been a long process, a lot of work, a lot of preparation, but feels incredible at this stage. Very, very pleased, delighted. Um, we're absolutely elated because we put a lot of work into this over the past few months. We've been preparing since October, so we're really, really happy that uh, we, we've managed to get through these few days uh, uh, with our oral submissions and uh, we're very successful. It's very important that we are actually making uh, lawyers, judges aware of the court's rulings and what better time to do it than with young lawyers just starting their uh, legal careers. If they can be aware of the court and its rulings and its significance, then in future they will be making better decisions and we will have fewer cases in the court.